Okay, and um, we finally reached the uh, part four of overall lecture, which is the arch architecture of IP networks. So here we're going to discuss uh, uh, topology structures, layers, you get familiar with the layers and uh, what, what, uh, what is in those layers, how they uh, differ from each other, um, uh, and of course structures, logically logical structures and topology, stru physical structures, how do they differ from each other, uh, and all the uh, necessary information that it needs to be uh, well known uh, before uh, you know you get an implementation of the network. Um, Okay, so um, here you see uh, the, uh, the, 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 topology, the topological structure of IP network. Uh, here we can indicate the backbone layer, uh, which is uh, this here, uh, those black lines with the uh, routers in, interconnected with each other, uh, which are called the backbone, uh, backbone nodes. Um, and then we see some uh, gray areas. This is so-called the access network area with the backbones and the distribution routers located here uh, and the users uh, with their end equipment uh, here. So this is where the aggregation is starting from, from, from this point to the, to the backbone, to the core. Um, yeah, and this of course, uh, which already was said that it's a distribution node. The distribution is responsible. The distribution node is responsible for distributing the traffic um, uh, towards and uh, to, uh, and towards the uh, users and and, and opposite. And of course, users, the, the black points here, the users, of course, which are the main beneficiaries of, um, of the network. Um, okay, so it was an example of, uh, of the topology structure. And now there's a logical structure of IP network. Um, and here we just, uh, uh, we indicate uh, uh, three different uh, logical structures. Um, first structure, the, the main structure, uh, the point where the uh, all the internet exchange points are located with the servers um, uh, is the core. Uh, uh, this is the point where uh, all the traffic is, is heading to. Um, as this is the uh, the possibility to the connection to the uh, to the world to the outside world this is the IXP point here and service with the services uh, which are carried by the or invoked by the network uh, uh, by the user networks by, by the users of the network um, okay the uh, the second layer uh, is the backbone layer uh, here is uh, the, this layer is responsible mainly for transport and the quality of service uh, and of course there's an interconnection between the core and, um, and the last layer which is the access network layer with its users inside um, and what is very important here the, the, the very important thing is that the the, the traffic is always generated from the uh, the, the lowest level layer uh, to the to the upper layers. Okay, so it's always being just like this from the users through the uh, through the uh, the aggregation goes all the right, uh, all the way up uh, from the access to the to the backbone uh, through the, through the backbone to the core. So. Uh, the layer is not only aggregating the traffic, okay, it's uh, there's also an interface between uh, the upper layer and the lower layer. Uh, okay, so uh, this is exactly how it's, uh, how it's um, organized. So uh, the access network with its users on the, just the edges, uh, the interface, okay, the, the backbone as an interface. Uh, of the access um, and the core, which is the main point of the uh, generally IXP um, uh, and the services. Uh, okay, and, uh, here we have definitions of uh, what is the core, how to understand the uh, how how the engineers understand the core, how the how uh, how the engineers understand the backbone and, and access.
So the core network is uh, all, is always a, 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 is um, is meant to be as a central part of every telecommunication network um, that provides um, different kind of services to the customers who are connecting who are connected to the network on the edges of the network. Uh, this is what we were, we saw in the last picture. Uh, regarding the backbone, well, the backbone. Uh, Many years ago, the backbone was was meant to be um, um, as a as a interconnect interconnection between various pieces of, of different lands. Um, but now uh, it, it is it is uh, it has more widely uh, definition and more more wide definition. Um, well, now IP backbone network is meant to be. Uh, a network that uh, that has uh, <coughs> link links routers in it, subnets and interfaces, um, and um, the backbone also uh, provides uh, the, the interface for the users uh, to all services offered by the network, which are located uh, in the core. Uh, and the access network uh, is a part of telecommunication communication and telecommunication network uh, which connects the subscribers to the service providers um, and it all uh, all happens uh, with the usage of the backbone network but, um, this is this is what I was uh, was I was painting on those, those logical structures uh, pre on the previous slide um, uh, okay so uh, we have a uh, we have a different topologies uh, that can be implemented uh, for the uh, for the backbone network. The, the most common, the most widely used topologies is the is the ring structure and the mesh structures. Of course, they uh, they differ from each other. There are some pros and cons for for every 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 kind of uh, uh, every one of each. Um, we will of course discuss it and then we will see what are the difference between those structures. Uh, so um, the ring structure, um, the ring structure are not suitable for, for backbone as 50% of capacity waste. So that means that there is a there is a two rings, uh, two fibers. And, uh, for example, okay, we have two two rings um, uh, mounted on those those those, um, those fibers. And one of the the rings is always on the standby mode. The the traffic in the ring goes only one way. Um, large amount of pass through traffic at inter uh, inter junctions requires more power routers. Well, every every node in the uh, uh, in in the ring is a is a is an inter junction. So traffic goes through that kind of uh, through its interfaces, and it needs to be processed. Need same bandwidth um, for the lambda uh, spectrum. And of course, same lambda spectrum on on all the uh, on, uh, on all the way of the ring. Uh, that means that uh, th this this particular uh, um, uh, lambda spectrum is uh, is uh, utilizing the same bandwidth on the ring. Uh, the mesh is uh, the mesh is a natural topology um, for the backbone, uh, but the mesh structure depends how many fibers are laid out in the cable. Um, and uh, what does it mean? I uh, will explain it uh, just uh, uh, on, the, on, the, on the picture of, uh, of of the mesh. But now you can see the ring. Okay, so the ring. This is this is the this is the, this is the uh, fifty percent of capacity, which means that the traffic will go only that way. The second one is just on the standby mode and is waiting to have some fiber cut, for example, here or here. Um, and this is the uh, uh, yeah. But before 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 I go further, uh, and the, those junctions, okay. Every every node is on the uh, on the on the on the route, so it's going to be the traffic is going to be flo floating on the uh, ingress and outgress interface, um, and is going to be proceed processes process it processing. Sorry, um, and mesh mesh. This is the uh, the. Typical, typical uh, structure um, for, for the mesh. Um, so we see that every 
basically every node has an um, independent connection with, with each other. So in case of fiber cuts, for example, here, it's still to have an access from, from, all, uh, from all different uh, ways. This is a very, this is very, very nice structure. The mesh structures are the most um, desirable structures, the most reliable one. But of course, uh, as, I, as was said, it, it, um, it, um, it will be indicating the number of, of uh, um, of fibers laid in the cable. Uh, okay, so and, yeah, this is the this is the uh, example of the mesh network. Uh, this is very very special structure, complete uh, called complete network, which means that every every node has an uh, independent connection with with its neighbor. So it's super super redundant, but it's very very expensive. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, switching in IP networks, so generating router operator operation. What the router does when such traffic uh, comes to the uh, uh, comes to the router. First of all, um, uh, as the uh, packets are, are flowing in into the uh, interface, uh, in the coming interface, uh, the router is looking at the IP address. Then it's updating the header. And packing it to the queue, uh, so it can go further. Or if there was a, if the node which which uh, came uh, here wasn't the, um, uh, the destination, it will be proceeded further. So I look up at IP address. Uh, of course, the uh, address table is going to be uh, to be processed. Um, then it's going to be updated with the uh, next hop uh, address. Put in the queue, buffer in the memory. From the memory, from the buffer, it will be uh, uh, sent out of the uh, of the interface. Uh, oh, okay, so this is exactly how it's going to be working. Mm. And this is uh, the example of the matrix. Uh, the matrix. So if uh, we have a lot of uh, routers, this is what's going to be happening um, on uh, in a real real uh, um, network with a lot of packets floating, right? Okay. So this is this is why it's going to be. This is why the buffer is needed. Okay. More packets need to be buffered, uh, so it's going to be uh, put it in the right queue. Um, okay, so here this is an example of a packet transfer in uh, ring structure. As I, as I said before, the only uh, one direction active, the second one in standby mode. Um, and this is uh, exactly the packets will be floating throughout the uh, th on the network on the network um, to get to the. Uh, uh, this one is going to be communicated with that one is going to need to communicate through all the way the junctioning nodes. Um, of course, it's going to be happening exactly the same on the opposite way. Okay, so this is this is how it's going to be happening, and we have a major failure. Uh, we have some fiber cut here, and this little fella is just um, out of uh, out of communication. We can reach this gentleman there. So this is how it's going to be happening um, uh, on the uh, standby mode ring. Uh, if this one's going to be communicated with that one, uh, it will get the information that there is some problem here. Of course, if it's a fiber card, probably the alarm will be probably for sure that the alarm will be sent um, to all the routers, and um, uh, this this ring, the second part of the ring, will be activated so that. Uh, this one will uh, will get the uh, uh, the packet, uh, and of course, if there is another fiber cut, uh, those those ones are just a cut off. Um, uh, but this case is really really rare, but it may happen. Of course, it's uh, it's just uh, live, so it's going to be can be very surprising. Um, okay, so uh, going further. Access network structure. So uh, the uh, the access layer, the layer where we have uh, our users located. Um, 
so this is how it basically looks uh, a physical structure um, so we have a uh, we have a we have a start topology okay so the, the backbone now and the connections to the uh, to the end devices of the last mile it can be everything it can be a uh, fiber uh, here and ending here and the, the uh, access for the users is just on the radio it can be a uh, um, pawn here passive optical network uh, and the fibers to the residential users it can be FTTH FTTP um, so there are a lot of a lot of different options and the uh, start logical topology this is uh, how it's going to be looking exactly in a logical way uh, and the physical way is uh, exactly the same as a logical also the traffic flow is, uh, is exactly the same um, as physical one because it's only just uh, one link so there's a uh, this is how it's going to be connected uh, this one uh, and, and this as, as a picture of logical uh, logical connections in the literature further you gonna, when you're going to be examined you will see you will notice that uh, the logical structure um, uh, can be different from the physical structure because uh, it can be of course it is it is it looks like exactly like this but the fibers are not, not the fibers but the traffic is uh, is located um, to the different node as a, as a backbone node so it's um, uh, it's it's not it might be a little bit confusing but uh, when you're going to be uh, reading the articles uh, you will probably notice that uh, so what is IP access uh, network um, usually the access network is distributed on the widespread uh, geographical area so it's um, it's very difficult to connect the users and the access lines directly to the backbone network so what do you do in practice? In practice, the, the IP access network is divided into two parts, the sub layers, let's say it. So it's a distribution part, so it's the last mile before, and the access part, which is the last mile. So distribution distribution will be um, will be, for example, the backbone nodes, okay, this, well, the, the backbone nodes with the distribution nodes, uh, and uh, this is going to be uh, the last mile before, so, um, so if, for example, we have a, another, another router distribution, distribution router here, right, so, uh, and, and, this would be this would be a, a part where well, this uh, the connections will be distributed among the users, uh, and this is the last mile before, and here is going to be the last mile as the uh, as the access for the for the final users. Um, yeah, and this is exactly how it's going to be uh, looked. Uh, so need, they need to join because it's a it's a nicely nice slide about it here. So access. Uh, with its users, the distribution, uh, with its distribution switches, for example, and um, another aggregation to the backbone. Um, of course, those little guys are uh, needed to be uh, connected with some additional box here, so it's going to be multi-star structure. So another switch should be here, of course. Those should be exactly connected like that um, but it's going to be probably uh, as far as I remember it's going to be a, a, a far a further topic of, about it <coughs> so real topology structure of access network uh, distribution part uh, so we can um, distinguish here um, two uh, two parts mm. ah. uh, well the, the two not two parts but two, two structures um, uh, the ring structure and the tree structure of course as you can probably uh, figure it out they differ from each other they have different pros different cons um, okay so let's, let's check it out what's uh, how it looks so this is the distribution part organized and or built with the usage of the uh, the ring uh, and the uh, the distribution nodes 
uh, located in, on the ring and the uh, uh, user is connected to, to each distribution uh, access device and the uh, common uh, the common backbone with the backbone uh, network facing here uh, and the ring uh, the, the second interface is sharing the ring for the uh, for the access to the distribution mm, and this uh, this is the same uh, but just built on the on the tree structure so you see uh, it's for sure it's different in the length of fused fibers mm. Uh, and of course, yeah, it's uh, it's 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 not so immune to to errors as you probably figure out. Um, and this is the comparison. You can see comparison of uh, how you can build a ring topology and the tree topology, and you can see exactly what are the uh, <coughs> the, the difference. What is the difference in this? Um, the number of kilometers so it will be have a great great impact on the uh, on the cost of your infrastructure mm, okay so the pros the pros the pros for uh, uh, for the uh, the ring are as you can see the redundancy of the ring structure gives the higher reliability of the network and then the tree structure of course, this is what I said. Uh, when you when you check it here, for example, <coughs> if you have a fiber cut here, you have those people just unconnected. So uh, the, the 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 ring structure uh, will will give us this redundancy. If we have a fiber fiber cut here, it's another problem to get to, to those the guys with the with the second route. Mm, okay, for every two nodes in the ring, there exists two disjoint routes. These routes allow to control the traffic flow in your network. Uh, in the ring network, it is possible to use the same network switching equipment, in example, routers, IP routers, or Metro Ethernet switches. For the uh, transport layer of the ring network, uh, there can be used optical systems. In example, uh, the, core, the, the CWDM system, um, doing from the network very effective access system uh, and in the case of of, uh, of the link or, or node failure the optical system can be reconfigured uh, can reconfigured in the time not longer than 50 milliseconds <clears throat> so these were the pros and the cons of course uh, the first con about uh, regarding the, the the ring structure is the is, is its cost it's always higher than the tree structure for the effective flow control ring structure requires to implement the management system. This is another thing, which is the uh, the cost generator here. Um, uh, and pros about the, uh, the 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 tree structure, uh, the realization cost of the tree structure is always significantly lower than the re realization cost of the ring structure. Um, the tree structure allows to, to easy control traffic flow uh, in the network. For network topology optimization of a tree structure, very effective algorithm can be used, like STP, for example. Uh, tree structure does not provide network redundancy, so any link or node failure disrupts the communication between backbone node and a certain part of access led layer network. This is basically the main cons about it, as the it's, it's a really, really low reliability. Every failure uh, of the uh, of the link, uh, if it's uh, if it's in the like in, uh, as a first line, will be um, impacting all the all the things which are behind that. So it's very 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 important to uh, about the decisions of uh, you know making the uh, um, proper cost. Uh, shares okay so uh, for example we can we can use more reliable uh, solutions for for very very important uh, customers uh, not so much reliable for I don't know residential users which are not so crucial etc etc it will always be impacting your uh, your your network shape your network shape between any access and backbone nodes, there exists only one route. Yeah, it's a natural, um, it's natural um, 
consequence of, of, of this uh, of the first uh, conclusion. Uh, in tree structure, there is no re uh, rationality to use XWDM systems. Optical, um, yeah, optical systems are just uh, not suitable in the tree structures. Um, it just doesn't make sense. Uh, in depends of uh, tree dimension, mm, which means the tree depth, uh, it is needed to install the uh, routers with different processing power. It is always, of course, related with this aggregation. Uh, the more traffic is going to be generated from the lower layers of the, of the network, uh, the more powerful uh, units will be needed uh, in the upper layers, in the upper uh, aggregation layers of even access network. Uh, and topology structure of access network um, as an access part. So two network topologies can be used in the access part. Um, and we have a star structure and hierarchical multi-star structure, which I showed you a few slides ago and when I was drawing this, uh, this box. <coughs> so how it looks. Um, so this is, this is how it presents uh, a, a, simple star structure topology and so we have an access user unit and the users and access unit is directly connected to the distribution node but if we have more users the more uh, ports will be utilized so we need to put more access units they need to be aggregated somewhere so we put an additional layer which is going to be exactly here and this is a second level of aggregation in access so it's going to be aggregating from the um, uh, the access nodes and this is the multi-star uh, hierarchical structure uh, okay so um, what are the requirements uh, for, for, for IP network? Well, the global internet traffic grows, uh, well, its, its growth forces new policies for IP network planning. Um, new network planning policies um, are connected both with the uh, backbone layer and access layer. Um, when designing um, when designing the proposed solution, um, it always requires to to be separate to be to to, to, to be um, to provide a separation between transport functions and service functions. Um, and of course, the only effective solution uh, for broadband IP network is the usage of optical technology, especially utilization of XWDM systems, um, which are designed to to uh, to, to make it in the uh, in such networks, and of course the access based on fiber on, on fiber. And this is uh, the uh, uh, simple example of the next generation network um, as a solution for broadband. Um, uh, well, such a network, um, such a new generation IP network, should transfer, as you can see. 18, uh, 10 to the power of 18 bytes. Uh, this is a huge, huge number of, of bytes. And um, as you can see here, uh, we have uh, um, we have our layers here. This is a um, aggregation aggregation layer uh, which is facing to the um, to the distribution to the to the access uh, here uh, for for. Uh, and for the backbone are routers, IP routers or Metro Ethernet switches implemented. And this is the core, the core of, of, the, uh, of the network. So what is the point? Uh, well, what is the... Um, uh, well, not, not the point, but the preferred way of, um, of, of implementation of such network. Well, um, the, the basic the basic idea is that the domain, the opt optical domain, as you can see here, this is the optical domain, should be as as far as, uh, wide as it could be possible. Uh, why? Because we would like to eliminate um, as much conversions from optical to electrical to optical again to diminish the delays in our network. So this is why this is why um, this is like a, a ideal model of the 
next generation IP network with a huge optical domain um, where such network can really really um, uh, carry huge amounts of traffic on the huge distances without uh, uh, um, without generating uh, delays for the users so um, of course of course here in the core uh, the DWDM system exists right the WDM which is the dense wave division multiplexing system which is generating the um, uh, the connections uh, between the nodes with the usage of, of, of lambdas uh, sorry okay so uh, we finally managed to the uh, to the end um, now uh, you can uh, um, grab the uh, uh, the, the, the provided literature uh, which is called the MBA network case study and study it and take the quiz in the Moodle um, so you can uh, try to uh, check out did you understand clearly what was said here on the lecture and what was written in the uh, in the article uh, after that you can uh, grab another literature uh, so it's going to be um, um, Part of the literature study here and check out the article about von Jesna City Broadband Network. Um, and here you will see exactly uh, how you could you should plan the MAN network from scratch. Um, so uh, how you build physically and logically uh, such kind of network. Okay, thank you very much for your attention and uh, have a good one.